Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Gromko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. We're now looking at that six weeks before your gender affirming surgery. And there's enough information that I have a six part mini series on this. So today we're looking at part two, the last minute medical tasks that you need to do. So we're getting down to this 11th hour. Here are some of the last minute medical things that you need to do. So number one, confirm with your surgeon's office. Do you need to have any medical tests during this month before surgery? And that might be an EKG. Now, if they do do an EKG or recommend it, ask for a copy of that so that you can keep in your purse or your wallet. It's nice to have a copy of an old EKG on hand. So if you're ever in the emergency room with chest pain or there's a question, you've got an old one to refer to. Ask if they will need to do blood tests. For example, a CBC or a chemistry panel. Ask if they'll need an HIV test. And some places do a MRSA swab. That's for methicillin resistant staph Aureus. Number two, do you need to have a pre-surgical physical exam? If so, is there a form that you need to complete? Is it to be done by, by your primary care provider? And how far in advance must this all be done? So just know that in advance. Number three, there are certain medications that you must stop before you have surgery. It's very common, for example, to stop aspirin or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, such as Motrin, for example, or Aleve, 10 days before your surgery. And that's because of the action of these drugs on your platelets. But there are some supplements, including vitamin E, that can also affect your blood clotting. So make certain that you know when you should be stopping vitamin E or other supplements. If you are on an anticoagulant medication, such as Coumadin or Warfarin or Xarelto or Eliquis, what does your surgeon say about when to stop this? This is a very specialized situation. And so you'll want to have this information and how it applies to you and your body. Number four, what are your surgeon's rules about stopping hormones before your surgery? Now, many surgeons require that you would stop estradiol, for example, two weeks before your surgery, but other surgeons do not. And the critical thing is to know what does your particular surgeon recommend and then follow their directions. Number five, if you are having electrolysis or laser treatments, find out when these treatments must end before surgery. Two to four weeks ahead is a frequent recommendation, but stopping is important because it allows the skin to heal and it also reduces your risk of an infection that might occur in the perioperative period. The main thing, of course, is what does your surgeon say about this? Number six, make a list of your medications and your allergies and take this with you either as a list or on your phone. You want to make a list of each and every medications medication that you take. So list the name of the medication, the dose strength, that is to say how many milligrams, the dose frequency, and know why you take it. Don't be the person who says, I have the little yellow pill because we won't know what that even means. Also make a list of your allergies and what kind of a reaction you've had with a particular substance. Number seven, ask the surgeon's office if there are post-operative supplies that you should buy ahead of time. Some surgeons will call in your prescriptions ahead of time so that you can have those ready for the immediate post-operative period before you even go to have the surgery. Ask if there is a list of post-operative medical supplies for your wound care. And I'll have a reference for this in an upcoming video. Number eight, ask if there are particular supplies for your particular surgery or your post-operative period. So for example, if you're having vaginoplasty, you will need to have vaginal dilators like the ones that I've illustrated in the slide. Now these are provided by the surgeon. And then secondly, you'll want to know if you're having phalloplasty, for example, like if, do you need to have a compression sleeve for the donor's site on the forearm? And that's something that your surgeon will be telling you, of course. Number eight, are there any specific post-op arrangements that you need to be making ahead of time? So for example, should you be setting up post-operative PT like pelvic floor, 
PT? And then finally, does your surgeon need to see you in person for a pre-op appointment before your surgery? And this is usually done the week or a couple of days before your surgery. So all of these questions are very important for you to find the answers to before you have your gender affirming surgery. I hope this video was, was helpful to you. In the next portion of our surgery, we're going to be looking at a shopping list of things to get before you actually have your surgery. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, and I'll see you in the next video.